All right, guys, so copywriting. We talked about the structure of a page. That's one thing. Another thing that you can do, and this, is, um, this can be really, really, really valuable. You want to make your copy have, you know, be something people want to read, right? So you want to make it valuable. One of the ways to do that is make it seem like it's educational. So instead of saying, you know, buy this whatever, you're instead talking about learning or how to and so forth. The idea being that as you're talking to them, as you're teaching them something, you're seeding the sale. Most webinars do this. So if you go attend a webinar, what they're doing there a lot of the times is they are talking to you about stuff. They're intentionally trying to give you too much stuff so that you feel overwhelmed so at the end they can sell you the solution to the overwhelm. Have you guys ever experienced that or has anyone ever tried that? And uh, some people say, well, you give them everything and then you sell them that one last little bit that they have to have to make it all work. And that's one school of thought is to really kind of, you know, hold them by the throat saying, well, I showed you all this. It appears to have value, but it doesn't actually have any value unless you buy. That is one school of thinking. The other one is simply to actually try and educate, educate, educate. Like we talked about warming your list last time. If you warm your list, you're going to have a better relationship with them to buy. The same thing actually occurs in sales videos, webinars, sales pages. If you can make your sales page actually valuable, they're a lot more likely to read it. They don't want to read a sales page. Like we talked about earlier, have you, have you guys ever read a page and some of the words on it or pretty soon you get the idea that, hey, this is a sales page? Do you guys know what I mean? It's like, oh, there's a word they use. There's something they use that lets me know a sale is coming. That makes you kind of not want to read through because you know what's coming. You know there's going to be more and more pitch, 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 and then they're going to ask you to buy. So what I'm saying here is when you get them on page, you don't have to jump right into what you're selling. You can actually start just talking about it. You can tell a story about a situation of somebody who encountered something and how they solved it or whatever, maybe with your product, maybe not, and then have your product related to it. And you can drop a lot more subtle hints in something that seems like an editorial. It seems like a newspaper. So there's a book that you guys should all write down. It's called Web Copy That Sells. It's by Maria Veloso. Web Copy That Sells. And what this book talks about is that editorial style of writing. And she worked with uh, Mark Joyner, and the advantage of working with him is they actually had enough traffic to test a lot of stuff. So you know, we talked yesterday about how, how do you determine whether it's an A-B split test or a six-way split test, and it was, well, how much traffic do you have? Because you need a certain number of people coming through to get any sort of relevant information from your tests, right? So she had enough information, she had enough flow of people coming through that company that she was able to test a lot of things. And that was kind of her main thing was, if it looks like an ad, they won't buy it. If it looks like a sales letter, they won't buy it. Or maybe some people will, but you'll get a lot, lot, lot less traction. Most people, if it looks like an ad, first of all, won't click on it. And if it looks like a sales page, they're not going to read it. So you make your ad look like something that's leading to information. And you make your page full of information. And then towards the end is when you ask for the sale. So when I talked about attention, interest, desire, and so forth, I'm not saying attention, we have the best water filters in the world for 20% off. It's more of, you know, how did this person go from being overweight and having cancer and heart disease and being depressed all the time to being incredibly happy, their skin is cleared up, blah, 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 blah. You know, well, I'll tell you about the little secret, but first, let me talk to you about some of the science involved. You know, and you're actually teaching. You're actually giving them relevant content that they're interested in that helps them understand their problems and some of the solutions. And then the, finally, at the end, you're saying, and this is a very light close, but you could say one of the options that most people take and one of the things that helps out people in a similar situation is this, you know, water filter, purifier, whatever it happens to be. I don't know if it... You do, you do have a shower head too, don't you? Yeah. So that's the idea is we're not talking about shower heads. We're talking about skin problems. And the whole thing's about skin problems. And at the end, we present the shower head as a solution. But even if they don't buy the shower head, here's the goal. Even if they don't buy the shower head at the bottom, the top part of the page still provided value. They still like you even if they didn't buy. And that's how your sales video should be. That's how your webinar should be. People shouldn't come to your page. And I'm sorry, I use the word shouldn't. There's not really a right or wrong, but you will convert better and you'll have longer relationships with these people if your marketing and sales actually contain some value. Because let's talk about a typical sales sequence. So we talked about 
you know, sequences, right? Let's say the sequence has uh, oh, a couple emails. And every single email says, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And each email is leading to the same page that simply says, buy my stuff. This is not going to be nearly as effective as this one talking about skin problems, this one talking about digestive problems, this one maybe talking about, you know, what, I don't know what else it solves for you guys, but if each one was an educational piece on the issues that your target market is having, and it's really actually teaching them about that versus just giving them a couple nuggets so that you can sell them, right? So if you actually teach them about this, the end goal is when they come out the end of this sequence, they should be happy whether they bought or not. Because at the end of this sequence, we want to start another sequence. Oh, you don't want our shower head? Okay, fine. What about our water filter for your kitchen sink? You know, and we go down that path. And it may all be the same. I might not be using this in the right context. If not, I apologize. But that's the idea. If I educate you about the things you're interested in, and I shed light on things for you, and then offer what I have at the end of that as a solution, yes, it's a softer close, but you're also going to retain those customers. So we even talked about yesterday in a launch. Hit them over the head, you know, basically juice them for conversion. That's what launches do. They juice you. But with the launch, they do educate you for a while first. So typically, if, if I, for example, and I bet a lot of you, if I, ex if I go into someone's launch and I watch their launch videos, I usually come out the other end, if they did a good job, happy that I watched them because most of those videos are like 40 minutes of content and 10 minutes of pitch. And that's, that's okay, I'll watch the content, I know the pitch is coming. I personally watch the pitch because I'm interested to see how they do it, but that's the idea, is basically make your stuff editorial, make it actually have some value, so that out the other end you have a happy person to start in the next sequence. And out the end of that, there's another happy person.